We've all heard how artificial intelligence is soon going to be better than all of us. It's artificial intelligence. Embrace open source AI. I think people are going to be able to create AI applications, you can call it. I've actually for a long time been a strong advocate of uh, AI. AIs can make decisions. They are not just tools in our hands, they are agents. But what if this isn't entirely true? What if I told you that AI has hit a wall? You see, there's something very interesting that's happening. These AI models can't cross this line. And we don't really know why. There seems to be a fundamental limit that even with more data and more computing power, these AI models keep getting stuck at this line. And this isn't just a minor problem. It points to something deeper about the nature of intelligence and the data that we use to train these AI models. If you ask the same app to draw an image of someone writing with their left hand, app will most likely draw someone writing with the right hand. Let me put it this way. Yes, computers have already massively outperformed us in many areas. Complex calculations, storing and retrieving vast amounts of data, we don't even stand a chance. But that's not really intelligence, right? Even AI companies differentiate between the AI we have now and the Artificial General Intelligence or AGI because even they know we are not quite there yet. So let's assume we gave hands to a chat GPT. Could it actually cook me an egg for breakfast? That question touches on a deeper challenge than just robotics. Now, before we get to that cooked egg or even AGI, there's a very practical and perhaps more fundamental problem. As we train an AI model, its error rate, basically how often it gets things wrong, generally drops off quickly at first and then levels off. If we train a larger model, it will usually achieve a lower error rate, but it requires significantly more compute power. And you might ask, why can't we just build bigger and bigger AI models until this error becomes zero? Well, that's exactly what these AI companies did. So the trend has been to scale to larger and larger models. When we plot these error rates against the compute used and switch to a logarithmic scale, then we get to see a clear pattern. All these different models, despite their size, they all seem to hit a wall. They all go very close, but don't cross this line. This line is known as the Compute Optimal or Compute Efficient Frontier. It represents the best possible performance for a given amount of compute with our current approach. But what is this wall, this frontier? And why can't we break through it? And what exactly does this mean for the future of AI? I'm Varun Kuntur and you're watching Breakdown by TBH. You see, there was a huge investment made of over $100 million to train the Jack GPT-4 model. And while GPT-4 was a massive leap from GPT-3, the scaling isn't infinite. But what are these fundamental limits? Researchers have identified three neural scaling laws. These laws show that the error rate of AI models scales in a very similar predictable power law fashion with compute, model size and the data set size. Surprisingly, these scaling laws don't seem to depend much on the specific model architecture or other algorithmic details, as long as reasonably good choices are made. This suggests something fundamental is at play. So why is that compute efficient frontier, that wall, so dangerous to the AI companies betting billions on continued exponential improvement? Well, it implies that just throwing more data, more parameters, and more GPUs at the problem might not be enough. We seem to be hitting a point of diminishing returns. For a while, we were on the steep part of the improvement curve. But recent experiences like the development of GPT-5 suggest we might be reaching a plateau. Even with quadrillions of parameters, the improvements become very, very small. If you compare a ChatGPT-2 to a ChatGPT-3, then we see a huge difference. But the difference in quality of output between a GPT-4 and GPT-5 is going to be much, much smaller. Now you might ask, why don't we just keep adding more data to get better? Well, that doesn't seem to solve the problem. Recently, even Elon Musk tweeted about this, that we are running out of high quality data to train these models. There's a point where the amount of data needed for training to reach a very small error rate or something approaching perfection is larger than the amount of usable data that the humanity has produced. Text, images, speech, all of it. We literally haven't generated enough data. So we have found the limit. 
not just of our current algorithms, but potentially of the resources available to train them with the current methods. This limitation is clearly visible when we look at how these large language models or LLMs like GPT actually think. What is ChatGPT really good at? Well, it's incredibly good at predicting the next word in a sentence. That ability allows it to pass standardized tests, write essays and fool many to thinking it's sentient. But how does it do it? If you ask it, what is 1 plus 1? It knows the answer is 2 not because it performed an addition, but because it has seen the sequence 1 plus 1 is 2 millions of times in its training data. It is pattern matching on a very big scale. This transformer model, which is at the core of ChatGPT, Grok, Llama and all these current models, is essentially a sophisticated pattern matching machine. They can turn words into complex numerical representations in a high dimensional space. GPT-3 used 12,288 dimensions to map around 50,000 word tokens. These tokens are then transformed based on context to predict the next token. This is where another challenge arises. The challenge of entropy of natural language or the irreducible loss. Because language is ambiguous and unpredictable, there's a theoretical minimum error rate that no model can beat. And that's simply because the data itself has inherent randomness and multiple valid next words or outcomes. For example, if you have the phrase, I saw a bat, an AI predicting the next word might have several plausible options, fly, swing, or in the cave. Because bat can refer to both an animal and a piece of sporting equipment. This inherent ambiguity means no AI can perfectly predict the next word every single time. For natural language, the Google DeepMind team estimated this irreducible error to be around 1.69, measured as cross entropy loss. Even an infinitely large model with infinite data can't get a loss lower than this for natural language text with current approaches. This leveling off of performance, especially for tasks beyond simple next word prediction, like complex reasoning or advanced mathematics, shows us this limit. Now, AI has already been around for over three years now. But if you walk into any hospital or a bank, you don't see any real use of AI. Nobody there is even using any of these AI models. Why is that? You see, there's a very practical flaw that holds back widespread adoption of AI models. It's called prompt injection. What the hell is prompt injection? You've likely heard of basic prompt injection, where a user gives a command to an LLM to make it ignore its original instructions. But there's a scarier version, indirect prompt injection. This is where malicious instructions are hidden within data that the LLM later processes. Imagine a job application containing hidden white text commands that tell an AI screening tool to automatically approve that application and reject all others, or even leak confidential company data. Or an AI that summarizes emails, but one email contains a hidden prompt causing the AI to send spam or perform unauthorized actions. It's like SQL injection, but for LLMs. This unpredictability and the potential for data breaches is a huge risk. And while safeguards are being developed, a foolproof solution is elusive as LLMs draw from even broader data sources. So now we have this theoretical boundary from scaling loss and data limits and practical vulnerabilities like prompt injection. This transformer model is a breakthrough, no doubt. It can help predict protein shapes, generate images of things that don't exist, and understand natural language to a degree we have never seen. But the path to AGI, to an AI that can cook that egg, or even just be reliably smarter in a general sense, isn't just about making current models bigger. Then, how are these models going to get better? And how do we achieve AGI? For years, we thought massive parameters and datasets were the only way. But the emergence of models like DeepSeq, which claim similar performance with a fraction of the parameters and cost, suggests there might be a more efficient architecture or training methods. In fact, the answer might not just be a better GPT-5, 6 or 7. Even prominent AI figures like Yan Li Kun recently suggested that we might need a different approach to achieve true AGI. LLMs have proven that we can make a computer understand natural language. So, companies figured the next step was connecting other systems to that brain. And this is why GPT can now see images or recognize speech, given eyes or ears to the system. This will eventually turn into hands. In fact, there are robotics companies like Figure who are already working on this. But how far is it from cooking an egg or doing my dishes? There's some reasoning needed behind that. This is where concepts like chain of thought reasoning come in. Instead of just spitting out the next word, the model tries to break down a question into smaller subtasks, solve them sequentially and then analyze the combined response against the original query. It's an attempt to mimic a human-like thought process. This iterative thinking has allowed current models to improve on general intelligence tests, IQ, logic and even coding. The number of jobs AI has already replaced, especially in startups, is crazy. 
But if you step outside these controlled environments, these AI models still struggle with common sense reasoning through creativity and decision making in complex real world scenarios. It takes these models significant time to process information that we humans grasp in seconds. Is this a processing problem or an architectural problem? What happens when these AI models can operate more freely in the real world? We keep pushing the definition of intelligence. Feelings, true invention, deep creativity. These are still largely human domains at this point. But the list of human-only skills is shrinking. It's no longer a question of if AI will surpass us in more areas. But when will these AI models surpass us? So, do computers really think? Well, that depends on what you mean by thinking. Now, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more such content. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.